<laughs> hey, what's going on guys? My name is Chris and welcome to Cross Shop. Today I thought it'd be fun to take a look at one of the questions that we as game collectors face all the time, and that's how to organize and manage our collections. To state the obvious for a lot of us, a big part of this hobby comes down to hunting for games that we've been looking to add to our collection, as well as stumbling across stuff that we weren't necessarily looking for, but definitely want to add anyway. So when we're away from our homes and collections, we need to be able to pull up a record of what we already have and what we're looking for. And although I've used some pretty basic tools in the past, like the Notes app on my phone or spreadsheets, a few years ago I came across a couple of solutions that have worked really well for my needs. And I figured I would take a couple minutes today to show them to you, just in case they're ones that you hadn't come across yet and might be interested in using yourself. Now the primary solution that I like and that I've been using for a few years now is CLZ Games. I should note right away too that it is indeed a paid app if you want the full version with an unlocked unlimited database. It's 15 bucks, but if you plan on using it for the foreseeable future as I did at the time when I adopted it, I think it's well worth it over the long haul. If you really don't wanna buy it for yourself, I guess you could ask for an iTunes gift card from a friend or a family member for a birthday or Christmas, something like that. But yeah, CLZ Games has a lot of really cool features and at the time when I first downloaded it, one of the main things that attracted me to it in the first place was the barcode scanning functionality. Let's say I wanted to add this copy of Far Cry 4 to my collection. I would just go in here, click this plus sign, barcode scanner by default comes up for me because I chose that. But then I would go here to the barcode, there it goes. And it pulls up information here. Now sometimes you do have to make a selection, it'll show like different limited editions or special editions. Um, and so you just have to kind of pick the one that's most applicable to you. Click plus again, add game to collection, and there it goes, it's in my collection now. The app has pretty fast database syncing I've found. It used to just be manual, but then at some point a few months ago, it might have been a little longer than that at this point, they added automatic database syncing as well. And for the manual option, you can just go here to the main side on the left and then just click this sync with CLZ Cloud. But like I said, yeah, you can see this little toggle here to sync changes automatically as well. The app has a pretty nice offering of personal fields. So you can add particular information about when you bought the game and what price and this completeness descriptor. That's actually somewhat new as well. It may have been around for a year, but again, I've been using this for several years, so it still feels like a newer feature to me. I don't mess with a lot of the fields in here, but I do add always the owner description it's typically me, but my girlfriend does buy games as well. The purchase date, the price, and since in the past this little condition row down here toward the bottom was the only means we had to track the completeness of particular games, I still use it in addition to the uh, completeness row up toward the top that's a little bit more detailed, just kind of an extra bit of data to use. And sometimes I note old inconsistencies from old records that I had in this database. So it's a chance for me to kind of double check the completeness of the games that I want to verify. Another cool thing is that it's linked to pricecharting.com so you can pretty quickly get an idea of the, the price for a loose cartridge versus a CIB copy of a game. I should also note that I have observed that at times there's a bit of a delay in that. I'm guessing it's probably just an incremental data fetch or something like that. It doesn't constantly stay in sync with price charting. But it still gives you a good idea of what the going rate for a loose copy of Snowboard Kids is versus the CIB copy. The app is really detailed, has a nice clean interface. It's pretty easy to navigate and use. It's been very reliable to me. And although you can certainly track your digital games too, I don't use it for that purpose. All of the titles that I have plugged in here are physical copies. And as I said before, this app pretty much serves as my master database. So at any given time, I can go to this in collection sort by platform column here and then see you know, my totals for any system. And I can go into any of those subfolders and see what games I actually have for that system. Overall, I've been extremely satisfied with the CLZ Games app. I know again, it's 15 bucks, but I bought it, I think, three years ago. So you figure, you know, five bucks a year. It's been a great solution to my personal collecting needs. Now that we've taken a look at CLZ Games, I wanna show you these other apps that I've been using for quite a while as well. I think I had a couple of them actually before switching to CLZ Games kind of permanently. Initially, these ones started up as just little system-specific apps you could find on the iOS app store, but they've since kind of been consolidated into a single retro collector app. So here's an example of the SNES Collect app. 
These are tied to a website called puregaming.org, which as far as I can tell is run by one guy over in Europe. And they all kind of look like this. And they are simpler indeed. And, and I kind of like having the collection button down here at the bottom, uh, the wanted option, um, and then being of course able to see all games. Now you'll note that there's a number kind of floating around there in the background. And that's the total number of games that again, this guy has plugged into the app. So the, the total count, for example, for us here in North America, is not gonna probably match that if you go reference this on uh, Nintendo Age or another website. This is going to include PAL games, NTSC games, titles from Japan, and in some cases there are gonna be some very specific special editions. One thing that's really cool that initially attracted me to this app suite was this uh, more option here on the right. And you can see that there's a meter at there in the top left corner where you can tap and see how many titles you have. And again, based on that number of total games for the system, you can kind of see the completeness of your collection. You can see what your estimated collection value is. But there's also this cool trophy room option where you can see what, again, according to this app, are your most rare games and then also your most valuable ones too. It's kind of a nice way to see, you know, at a quick glance where some of your more unique or more sought after games fall in this particular app's ranking system. And it adds just a little extra flair, I guess, to enjoying your video game tracking software. Now, like I said, these apps are arguably redundant since I have that CLZ Games app, but I kind of personally think of them as almost a backup catalog for the systems and games that I care about the most. If I notice, for example, that the number of games that show in my N64 collection within the CLZ Games app doesn't match what's shown in the N64 collector app over here, I can then step back and say, okay, I need to sync both databases real quick and just make sure, you know, I didn't have something pending in one of them. And then if there's still a discrepancy, I can go in and, and try to narrow down what game or games are missing from one or the other. Similar to the CLZ games app, these red apps also show price values for three different condition types but the values are not synced with pricecharting.com. I've looked around on the puregaming.org website to see if I can find an explanation for how those values are calculated, but I didn't have any luck. I'm not positive, but I think that they come from eBay, possibly as averages of sold listings from within a certain time frame, but I'm not sure and I haven't sent an email to <laughs> the, the guy who runs the site. If one of you folks in the comments has used this series of apps and you know the answer to that question, please let us know. Even though they're not synced with price charting, it's kind of helpful to be able to look at price charting and then go to these apps and kind of get a better idea that's a little bit more well-rounded of where a going rate for a particular title is at that given time. I currently have eight of these apps on my phone. As you can see, I've got one for NES, the PS1, Super Nintendo, the N64, the GameCube, the DS, the Genesis Mega Drive, and the Wii on here. But then there's also this Retro Collect kind of master app, and this came out a while back, and it's it's kind of a weird setup now. It's It's synced with those other ones, but you can't actually, from what I can tell anyway, go download those individual ones anymore from the App Store unless you've already had them on your phone before the developer consolidated everything. But this Retro Collector host app kind of consolidates all of them into one view so you can see the total number of games across all of your systems and you know some value summary things. And then you can tap on these little folders to the right and then it basically shows you the view from within your particular systems app, but without opening that systems app. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it as well. It's fun to use. It's kind of a nice little backup, as I was saying before. And it's kind of nice to have for those systems that I am most interested in collecting for. Well guys, I hope this provided a closer look for at least a few of you at a good solution or two that might work well for your collecting goals. I know these options are obviously more expensive than using the Notes app in your phone or something like Evernote or Microsoft Excel. But for those of us who want something that's designed specifically for video games and something that's frankly better to look at, more fun to use. These are awesome options to consider. Either way, I'm curious to know what kind of systems or tools you guys are using to track the games you own. So let me know in the comments how you managed to organize and catalog your collection. Anyway guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today to check out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a resounding thumbs down. Once again, my name is Chris. I appreciate you hanging out at Cross Shop today. Thank you for subscribing. And as always, play heavy. Hey, hey, this is
Stop.